Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome along. It is Saturday, the 2nd of March. I uh, hope you are all well. Um, yes, so tonight, as you can obviously already tell, here's a pre-recorded quiz for you on this, on this Saturday night. Welcome to March as well. I uh, just suddenly thought as well. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on at the minute here at home. So um, I took the sort of late decision on Friday uh, to pre-record it just so I've got a clear day with Jack tomorrow. Or as you watch this, I will have had a clear day with Jack. Uh, without thinking about sort of quizzes or anything like that while well, it's just the two of us at the moment so yeah so we're uh, pre-recorded this evening but no less one second but no less fun uh to come there'll still be all the usual fun and games and stuff and a slight tweak to how you'll um uh, how you'll get the uh, if you need the questions in the break but we'll get to all of that in a little while it's not a problem uh so yeah about 30 seconds and we'll get under We'll get underway. Let's try that again. We'll get underway this evening. I accidentally muted myself. Uh, yeah, so we'll um, couple it about, about what have we got now. About 20 seconds and we'll get underway uh, for tonight. Uh, still got some dingbats for your second break and for your first one. Oh, Ditloids. Yes, the return of Ditloids for your first break. I can remember them. A complete mental blank as to what I'd actually done for your break. Uh, so there we go. But let's then get this show on the road. Welcome along, everyone. It is Saturday, the 2nd of March. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Hope you are all well. Uh, 50 questions then, as always, in front of us. And we will kick this off tonight with entertainment. If it wants to change. There we go. Uh, who had hits in the late 60s with I Only Want To Be With You? The Look Of Love and son of a preacher man. So who had hits in the late 60s with I Only Want To Be With You, The Look Of Love, and Son Of A Preacher Man? The Look Of Love. I only remember that from Austin Powers. I think it was Austin Powers. Hmm. Number two, which... Oh, yeah so glad i'm not doing this question live uh, which cartoon character's catchphrase was and i found out this is how it's actually spelled <clears throat> here we go ladies and gentlemen Shh, be very very quiet i'm hunting wabbits that is poor which cartoon character's phrase was Shh, be very very quiet i'm hunting wabbits that was a poor effort Wait to open the Discord server later and see the mocking that I will be getting. And uh, hello. I don't know why, but I don't know why it does this. You flick it down, flick the scroll wheel down on the mouse, ready to change the slide, and it just uh, as I think about it. Uh, number three, which actress has been married to Freddie Moore, Bruce Willis, and Ashton Kutcher? So, which actress has been married to Freddie Moore, Bruce Willis, and Ashton Kutcher? Number four, Richard Melville Hall had albums in the noughties entitled Play, 18 and Hotel. What was his stage name? So Richard Melville Hall had albums in the noughties entitled Play, 18 and Hotel. What was his stage name? Did I mean to put the noughties in there? Let me just have a quick look. Is that another one I should have changed? Oh, no. No. Oh, that was very high pitched. Oh, no, no, everything's fine. Number five, SM TV Live was presented by Kat Dealey and which entertainment duo? So SM TV Live was presented by Kat Dealey and which entertainment duo? Number six, in the movies, who did Harry meet in 1989, according to the title of the film? 
in the movies. Who did Harry meet in 1989? Number seven, which actress links the films Romance on the High Seas, 1948, Calamity Jane, 1953, and the albums Secret Love in 1954 and Que Sera Sera in 1956? So I probably should have said actress stroke singer, but never mind. Uh, which actress links the films Romance on the High Seas, 1948, Calamity Jane in 1953, and the album Secret Love, 1954, and Que Sera Sera? Oh, excuse me. Que sera, sera in 1956. Uh, this wasn't a good idea trying to pre-record this late on a Friday night, but never mind. <laughs> At number eight, Nick Hewer and Margaret Mountford were the original board members on which reality game show? Nick Hewer and Margaret Mountford were the original board members on which reality game show? Number nine, the Bard and Bellas and the... Ah, oh, no, this was a... Yeah, this was the question I meant to change. Never mind. Uh, the Bard and Bellas and the Troublemakers are a cappella singing groups in which movie franchise? I pinched this for Thursday morning for Zoe's show. I meant to change it. So there was one from Thursday and one from here. Oops. What happens when you write so many questions in a week? And finally, for entertainment number 10, how is the music duo of Neil Tennant and Chris Lowe better known? So how is the music duo of Neil Tennant and Chris Lowe better known? Round two then with some nature for you this evening. So one of the things I do get mentioned to me after quite a while, well, yeah, a few times I get this, the, you know, can you just do a nature round rather than bundling it in with science? So that's why you got science and technology on Thursday, if you played on Thursday, and just a sole nature round for you for uh, round two tonight. Here's number one. Uh, in the measurement of horses, four inches equals one what? So in the measurement of horses, four inches equals one what? Number two, which insect has the collective noun as swarm, but when a mass fly together, it's called a cloud? There's also about four or five other collective nouns for this insect, but I'd already put it sort of into my plan for tonight. So which insect has the collective noun as swarm, but when a mass fly together, it's called a cloud. Number three, which disease is transmitted by a mosquito? A mosquito. <laughs> which disease is mos is transmit? Which disease is transmitted by a mosquito? Number four, what is the hardest substance in the human body? Stop giggling at the back. What is the hardest substance in the human body? 
stop giggling. It's a family friendly show. Not quite sure what's worse. The fact that I'm trying to preempt people potentially laughing at that joke when I'm sat here, not I'm talking to myself. I mean, obviously, when you watch this, I won't be talking to myself, but I'm actually sat here on a Friday night talking to myself, preempting a joke. Mm. Number five, uh, the horn of a rhino contains keratin, the same material found in which human part? Again, stop giggling. Uh, the horn of a rhino contains keratin, the same material found in which human parts? I mean, I know even when I'm live, I am technically talking to myself, but at least when I'm live, I know there is, a, you know, I'm actually talking to people. There are people watching. It's pre-recorded. I am just sat here on my own. All by myself. Jack's asleep as well, so. Uh, number six, named for its distinctive sound. What is the name of this bird? Named for its distinctive sound. What is the name of this bird? Uh, number seven, generally, generally. Oh, I did that. Uh, which side of the brain controls speech, comprehension, arithmetic, and writing? Mine, neither side. Uh, generally, which side of the brain controls speech, comprehension, arithmetic, and writing? I think my brain needs a software update. Uh, number eight, you is the name for a female what? So you is a name for a female what? Number nine, providing it has eaten enough to survive, how long does a dormouse hibernate for? Is it five, seven, nine, or 11 months? So providing it has eaten enough to survive, how long does a dormouse hibernate for? Is it five, seven, nine, or 11 months? Finding number 10, which of these continents would you not find wild crocodiles? Is it Europe, Asia, or Australia? So which of these continents would you not find wild crocodiles? Is it Europe, Asia, or Australia? Hmm. Blockbusters then for round three to take you into the break. Number one, what AH is said to be someone's vulnerability or weakness? So what AH is said to be someone's vulnerability or weakness? Number two, what TT is the name of a sweet or a bookmaker's hand symbols at a racetrack? So what TT, saying that very slowly so no one can, uh, anyway, uh, is the name of a sweet or a bookmaker's hand symbols at a racetrack?
Number three, what BB is the sidekick of Yogi Bear? There you go. So if you're playing on Thursday, I told you it was coming. So what BB is the sidekick of Yogi Yogi Bear? It's Yogi. No. I know that my um, sort of impersonations are off point usually, but that's my they're well off at the minute. Number four, what EO is the Japanese translation of the word karaoke? I've not done karaoke for so long. Mm. Uh, what EO is the Japanese translation of the word karaoke? Number five, what WS is the name of a, a stadium in London that hosts many sporting events? So what WS is the, ho is the name of a stadium in London that hosts many sporting events? Number six, what ML is a principal tourist draw at the Louvre Museum? Museum. What ML is a principal tourist draw at the Louvre Museum? And people often ask me about the pre-recorded quizzes and why I do them all in one go and I don't sit there and edit it and make sure that it's absolutely spot on and perfect. And that there is one of the principal reasons. I would be there probably until the following Saturday if I was to edit out all of the, um, you know, pronunciations and all that jazz. Do it in one go, let it go. Uh, number seven, what SL is a system of hand gestures to aid deaf people? So what SL is a system of hand gestures to aid deaf people? Number eight, what FP is the name of a luxury bed? So what FP is the name of a luxury bed? Number nine, what FP is a following used by aircraft? So what FP is a following used by aircraft? Uh, and your final one, number 10, what N-E is a pot of money set aside? So what N-E is a pot of money set aside? I need to put myself on screen, don't I? Uh, right, okay, so there we go. That is your first 30 questions for you this evening. Now, normally what I do at this point is point you in the direction of jvpqquestions.com and tell you to go over there um, and all the questions will be there. However, obviously, because it's not pre-recorded because it's pre-recorded, and I can't push the button as I do live, um, the big QR code that is there, that is basically covering me over, let me just double check it's working. 
And there we go. So you won't be able to see it there, um, but it will take you. So if you scan that QR code, and I'll stay here for a couple of minutes. Uh, if you scan that QR code, that will take you direct to rounds one to three. So you'll see round one when you first land on the page. And then if you scroll uh, down, you'll see round two, round three. And at the very bottom, there is the picture of the bird you need to name. Uh, from the nature round. So yeah, so that's all we need to do. So if you scan that QR code, that will take you to the website, uh, which is why I'm hanging here for a moment. It's not, it's, let's go that way. There you go. And I'll do the same again for the second break. For the second break, there'll be another huge QR code like that that will come on screen and that will take you direct to rounds four and five. So for your first break, it is the return of Ditloids. And if you've never done Ditloids before, these are basically number puzzles. Uh, so you'll see a collection of numbers and letters that will come up on the screen. There's nine of them in total. Uh, all you need to do is basically work out what the cryptic Ditloid is. So for example, if I said uh, five... O equals BE, uh, it would be, you know, 50 equals bullseye. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully they're nice and straightforward. And I will see you if I push the right, that one there. I haven't set this up. Uh, I need to turn that off. Uh, background audio on, brakes on. And I think that's all I need. I'll see you in seven.
Okay, answers then coming up in just a second's time. So uh, get your final guesses down. Okay, here we go in three, two, one. There we go. So number one, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Number two, 57, Heinz varieties. Number three, eight tentacles on an octopus. Number four, 21 spots on a die. Yeah. Uh, number five, three holes in a bowling ball. Number six, six murder weapons in a game of Cluedo or Clue if you're uh, from America. Uh, number seven, four months with 30 days number six uh, number eight even six balls to an over in cricket and number nine 360 degrees in a circle now if you have because there is every chance it does happen occasionally when i do ditloids if you've come up with another one that fits for those and you can prove to the teams that you're playing with or what have you or you're happy with them um, that it's right that's absolutely fine. It might be that I've overlooked it. Uh, so, yeah, there's no issue with that. If you have something different, please don't shout at me. It's not a problem. It, you know, Ditloids can get like that from time to time. Sometimes you might have, I might have overlooked one. So, yeah, uh, it's not a problem if you have ended up uh, with something slightly different. Uh, that one there, black magic top off, black magic bottom on. Dim, bidim, bidim, bidim. OK, right, let's give you the answers then to the first part of your quiz this evening. Here we go with number one, number entertainment. And number one, uh, who had hits in the late 60s with I Only Want to Be With You, The Look of Love and Son of a Preacher Man. It was Dusty Springfield. Number two, which cartoon character's catchphrase was Shh, be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbit. Uh, it's Elmer Fudd. Number three, which actress has been married to Freddie Moore, Bruce Willis and Ashton Kutcher? It is Demi Moore. Number four, Richard Melville Hall had albums in the noughties entitled Play, 18 and Hotel. But what was his stage name? Moby. Number five, SMTV Live was presented by Cat Deedy and which entertainment duo? It was Anton Deck. Number six, in the movies, who did Harry meet in 1989? It was Sally, when Harry met Sally. Number seven, which actress links the films Romance on the High Seas, 1948, uh, Calamity Jane in 1953, and the album Secret Love in 54, and Que Sera in 56, it was Doris Day. Number eight, Nick Cure and Margaret Mountford were the original board members on The Apprentice. I like Karen and Tim, but I really do. Th I would love to see Nick and Margaret back. At number nine, the Barden Bellas and the Troublemakers are a cappella singing groups in which movie franchise? It's Pitch Perfect. And number 10, how is the music duo of Neil Tennant and Chris Lowe better known? It is the Pet Shop Boys. Uh, round two with nature. Number one in the measurement of horse is four, e four inches equals one hand. Number two, which insect has the collective noun of a swarm, but when a mass fly together, it's called a cloud. Uh, it is bees. Uh, I haven't checked. I know bees have got a lot of collective nouns. I've just suddenly thought I haven't checked if wasp is one as well, whether that's got cloud and swarm. I'll leave that to your, your decision. Um, I might have a look in the second break, but for now, we'll leave it to your decision. Uh, I know it's definitely bees. Uh, number three, which disease is transmitted by a mosquito? It is malaria. Number four, what, what is the hardest substance in the human body? It is enamel. Number five, the horn of a rhino contains keratin, the same material found in which human part? It's either hair or fingernails. Number six, named for its distinctive sound, what is the name of this bird? It is Hummingbird. 
Number seven, generally, which side of the brain controls speech, comprehension, arithmetic, and writing? It is the left side of the brain. Number eight, ew is the name for a female sheep. Number nine, providing it has eaten enough to survive, how long does a dormouse uh, hibernate for? It's 11 months. As long as, it's, as long as it's eaten enough to survive, a dormouse will hibernate for 11 months. Comes out for a month, eats again, goes back to bed. Sounds like a perfect life, to be fair. And number 10, which of these continents would you not find wild crocodiles? It is Europe. Uh, blockbusters number one what a h is said to be someone's vulnerability or weakness it is their achilles heel number two what t t is the name of a sweet or bookmaker's hand symbols at a racetrack it is tic tac you know where they do that yeah you know what i mean um it's broken it's broken uh, number three what bb is the sidekick of yogi bear it is boo boo Number four, what EO is a Japanese translation of the word karaoke? It is empty orchestra. Number five, what WS is the name of a stadium in London that hosts many sporting events? It's Wembley Stadium. Number six, what ML is a principal tourist drawer at the Louvre Museum? It's the Mona Lisa. Number seven, what SL is a system of hand gestures to aid deaf people? It is sign language. Number eight, what FP is the name of a luxury bed? It is four poster. Number nine, what FP is a following used by aircraft? It is flight path. And number 10, what NE is a pot of money set aside? It is a nest egg. So there you go. That is your first 30 questions and answers for you. How are you doing so far? I probably should have said, um, you know, don't put the answers in the YouTube live chat. But I think most people would have been sensible enough to not worry about that for now. Um, but yeah, so how are you getting on? You can use the YouTube live chat tonight uh, as it's a Saturday. So you can put your scores in there for how you are doing so far. Uh, still to come, connections round and general knowledge. Yes, indeed. Mm hmm. Da, da, da. Mm. Yes. I think I know just about how much time to leave for the um until I go into uh, into round two in round round four even. Mm. About that much. Uh, right, let's do it. Let's see how you get on with the final 20 questions then this evening. Uh, we kick off round four and part two with a connections round. As always, nine questions. Question number 10, what links them all together? Let's start with this number one. Uh, what three letter word describes someone who has a high temperature? So what three letter word describes someone who has a high temperature? Number two, what word can go after Tyne, Tower, Humber, and Millennium? So what word can go after Tyne, Tower, Humber, and Millennium? Number three, what kind of house warns ships of rocks or other dangers? So what kind of house warns ships of rocks or other dangers? I'm really not comfortable at the minute. I think it's this lumber support. I don't think I've got this lumber support thing in the right place. Number four, another word for naked or nude. What describes a person without coverings or clothing? So another word for naked or nude. What describes a person without coverings or clothing?
number five. What F describes a level and even surface? So what F describes an even and level, level and even surface? Number six, what can go after Vista to make the name of a creative online design company? So what can go after Vista to make the name of a creative online design company? Number seven, which Tom Hanks film features a giant floor piano? So which Tom Hanks film features a giant floor piano? Number eight, when shopping, typically you can pick up fruit and vegetables in pre-packed Pre-packed packets or what? So when shopping, typically you can pick up fruit and vegetables in pre-packed packets or what? Uh, number nine, what is the surname of Zoe, the current Radio 2 Breakfast Show host? She won't be watching on a Saturday night. <laughs> uh, but what is the surname of Zoe, the current Radio 2 Breakfast Show host? And as always... What links the nine answers together? So what links those nine answers together? Okay, wrapping it up then with general knowledge for you. Uh, starting with this, number one. Uh, the Ashes is a cricket series of matches played between England and which nation? So the Ashes is a cricket series of matches played between England and which nation? And number two, what is the largest continent in terms of population? So what is the largest continent in terms of population? Uh, number three, which novel would you find the characters of the White Rabbit? The Dodo. Bill the Lizard and the Knave of Hearts. So which novel would you find the characters of the White Rabbit? The Dodo, Bill the Lizard and the Knave of Hearts. Number four, where does the Muffin Man live according to the nursery rhyme? So where does the Muffin Man live according to the nursery rhyme? Number six, how many herbs and spices make up KFC's secret recipe? So how many herbs and spices make up KFC's secret recipe? Uh, 
Number six, which weight term appears in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Which weight term appears in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Number seven, the NASA Artemis missions are with the aim of landing humans where? So the NASA Artemis missions are with the aim of landing humans where? Uh, number eight, commonly associated with passenger transport ships. What does the R stand for in Roro? So commonly associated with passenger ships, uh, passenger transport ships. What does the R stand for in Roro? Number nine, in the game of croquet, players use a mallet to hit the balls through what? So in the game of croquet, players use a mallet to hit the balls through what? And your final question tonight, number 10. What colour is the left stripe on the flag of Belgium? So what colour is the left stripe on the flag of Belgium? Okay, there you have it. That is all of your questions for the main part of the quiz this evening. Uh, so um, if you need a recap on those, they are just so that again, scan that QR code that will take you to rounds four and five. Again, same with the previous. You'll see round four. Scroll down. You'll see round five. Uh, so that is on your screens now. Coming up in just a moment's time while I set it up will be your dingbats. So let me just... Firstly, make sure that um, apparently last week there were some answers on the screen, which really baffled me. Um, I don't know how that happened. Uh, background audio and breaks. There we go. Uh, yeah, so apparently, yeah, there was some, uh, the, the answers were on screen and loads of you got nine out of nine, which I thought, you know, well played, well done, fair play. <laughs> yeah, I've made sure this week. Uh, so there will be no answers on screen, I'm afraid. Uh, but there will be nine dingbats coming up for you um, and a seven minute break. And when I return, I'll give you the answers to the main part of the quiz. If you still need that QR code, pause it now. And then you can catch up. I'll see you in seven minutes.
Okie dokie answers then for these in a short moment's time. Get yourself ready to go. They're not so easy when you haven't got the answers on screen, are they? <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. That'd have been really weird if they did that and the answers didn't come up. Anyway, right, number one is absentee. There's no E. So there's an absent E. And number two, relationships. Number three, nice to see you. To see you. Yeah. Uh, number four, eyes in the back of your head. Number five, foregone conclusion. Number six, spicy. Spy, C, I, C, never mind. Uh, number seven, see no evil. And uh, number eight, the classic, in the middle of nowhere. And number nine, I quite like this one. Cat among the pigeons. Right, there you have it. So that is all of your dingbats and ditloids and break stuff all done. So, sorry, just, I just got a dent in the middle of my forehead. <laughs> when I came back to big camp. Random dent in the middle of... Just bash my head on something I've not even realised. Anyway, right, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, um, answers coming up then in a moment's time. So get your final answers written down. Um, yes, we're into March. Uh, so we're only a few weeks away from the four-year anniversary. Dun, dun, dun. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing, to be honest. I've, I've tried a few things and tried a couple of bits and pieces, but it's not sort of working. So yeah, four-year anniversary is uh, not too far around the corner. Uh, so yeah, so that will uh, bring it to uh, an end of fun March. And then we'll have a relatively quiet April, my birthday, Sarah and Jack's birthday, and then May. Mm, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm not that far away from being able to share with you uh, what is going on uh, and what the big reveal is for the date that I gave you, which was the 16th of May. Uh, uh, that's the one. Uh, yes, yeah, so the 16th of May. Hmm. Hopefully I'm not. Uh, hopefully it'll be about another week or so and I can tell you. Anyway, right, for now, let's get back to the quiz. And here we go. Let's give you the answers to the final part of the final two rounds. Here's your connections. Round four, number one. Uh, what three-letter word describes someone who has a high temperature? Hot. Number two, uh, what word can go after time, tower, humber, and millennium? It is bridge. And number three, what kind of house... One ships of rocks or other dangers. It's a lighthouse. Number four, another word for naked or nude. What describes a person without clo uh, coverings or clothing? It's bare. Number five, what F describes a level and even surface? It's flat. Number six, what can go after Vista to make the name of a creative online design company? It's print, Vista print. Number seven, which Tom Hanks film features a giant floor piano? It's big. Uh, number eight, when shopping, typically you can pick up fruit and vegetables in pre-packed packets or loose. Is that pre-packed or loose? Number nine, what is the surname of Zoe, the current Radio 2 Breakfast Show host? It is Ball, Zoe Ball. So what links all of those answers together? Foot. So foot ball, foot loose, footprint, hot foot. There you go. All foot. Well done. If you got that into your general knowledge, then number one, the Ashes is a cricket series of matches played between England and which nation? It's Australia. Number two, what is the largest continent in terms of a population? It's Asia. Number three, which novel would you find the characters of the White Rabbit, the Dodo, Bill the Lizard, and the Knave of Hearts? It's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Number four, where does the Muffin Man live according to the nursery rhyme? Drury Lane. Love the way that they're not actually specific about what number he lives at. So maybe there's only one residential property on Drury, on, well, when this was written in Drury Lane. Now there's just a load of theatres, but... Well, theatres and takeaways. 
and a couple of offices. In fact, I don't think there's any. I wonder if there is actually any residential properties on Drury Lane. Do you know the Muffin Man? The Muffin Man lives on Drury Lane. Whereabouts? Number five. How many herbs and spices make up KFC's secret recipe? There are 11. Number six. Which weight term appears in the NATO alphabet? It's kilo. Number seven. The NASA Artemis missions are with the aim of landing humans where? Again, it's on the moon. The Artemis missions are to land them on the moon, and then if they can work it all out and keep people on the moon, then they'll look to use it as a forward operating base for further discoveries, I believe. And number eight, commonly associated with passenger transport ships, what does the R stand for in RORO? It is roll, roll on, roll off. Number nine, in the game of croquet, players use a mallet to hit the balls through what? Uh, it's hoops. Uh, but apparently, again, in a couple of other countries, it's also they're also known as wickets. I don't know why, but... And your final question, number 10. What colour is the left stripe on the flag of Belgium? It is black. So, Tot, your scores up. How have you done this evening? Out of a possible 50 points available for you tonight, uh, there should be, around about now... Uh, there should be a social media post ready to go for you to share your scores. And thank you for when you do. Really do appreciate it because I say it does help me work out if I've made it too easy or too hard on an evening. Uh, if you need a tiebreaker, though, your question is this. How many parish churches were destroyed in the Great Fire of London in 1666? So how many parish churches were destroyed in the Great Fire of London in 1666? Yeah, no, I do like when you do share your scores, it does really help. Because I do look at it and go, ooh, that was easier than I thought. Or, ooh, that was harder than I thought. And then it does help. Because then I sit down. Because what I do now is I sit down on a Monday morning. First thing I do, come into my office on a Monday morning, get everything set up. And I look back through Thursday and Saturday social posts, have a look at the scores, see, you know, roughly how people have done compared to what I thought you know, the average sort of would look like. And then I get to work on uh, Thursday and Saturday's quiz for that week. So it does help. Uh, but anyway, answer to this one in three, two, one. 87. Hmm. So there were 87 parish churches were destroyed in the Great Fire of London. And only six people's deaths were recorded. I think I've said that before. Um, but yeah, so there you go. 87. Well done if you got near to that. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is your Saturday night entertainment and quiz for you for this 2nd of March. Uh, thank you very much, as always, for joining me this evening. Uh, so we'll be back with you with another quiz. Well, there's two quizzes next week, as always, Thursday night and Saturday night. Uh, and if you want a short one as well, uh, don't forget Zoe Ball's Breakfast Show on a Thursday morning from about 10 past 8. There is myself uh, with five questions, which if you listen to those, there's every possibility I might have nicked them from th Monday because I write Zoe Ball's questions on a Wednesday. So there's every possibility I might be having a complete brain fade, nick the questions from there and then forget to put them in. So if you listen, you never know, you might get a hint. Uh, but yeah, that is it from me this evening. Do share your scores across our social platforms on Facebook and Instagram. And that will be it from me for tonight. So I will see you either next Thursday or next Saturday. Uh, but as always from me, I'll see you soon. Take care and stay safe.